What's going on, my super fam? So, patch 3.6 banner of Nahida and Nilu has just been announced, and the roster this time around looked really good. Quite different from what we were expecting from our prediction banners, but now it turns out like this, I'm sure it is a very good news for many of us. However, guys, before you just go straight ahead, dive in and pull on these banners, there are always some consideration you do want to keep in mind before you pull, and that is the usual goal of this video to help you out on that. Now guys, here's a quick word on today's sponsor, Paimon's Bargain. If you're someone who's been spending your hard-earned money to pull for your favorite character, you'd know how expensive the top-up can get. But what if I were to tell you that from now on, you can get at least a 20% off on all of your top-ups, walk-ins, and battle pass by? How much would that help you to save? And that's what Paimon's Bargain here will provide you. Whenever you order your Primo Gems buy through Paimon's Bargain, you will be able to order at a discounted price. Now the reason why this is legit is because it is through discounted Koda shop or you can understand it as gift card discount. Paimon's bargains already have many people following, plus have worked with larger creators like coaching mains. And of course, I wouldn't be telling you guys this if it wasn't legit. How you do it is basically join Paimon's bargain discord server. There will be a link down in my description and once you're there, there will be direct instruction on how you can order. As always, good luck on your character pools guys, limited spending only if you do spend and with that let's just hop into today's video. So first off guys, we're going to be basically discussing Nahida and Nilu in terms of those of you who already have these character and is planning to pull more on them. Because recently guys, I have been discussing in depth a lot into Nilu and Nahida. So if you're someone who is considering to pull for these character the first time or not, I have these two videos here that I can be sure it will help you out tremendously. Now in terms of Nahida's guys, if you are planning to invest more into her or like pulling for her constantly, Installations. Let's see which are the one that has decent returns on investment. Now for her C1, basically what it does is that when her burst is unleashed, the elemental types of the party members that are being tabulated, the counts will be added by 1 to the number of pyro, electro, and hydro character respectively. So basically if you didn't remember, her burst gets the ability to buff her E skill depend on the elemental type of the character you have on your team. So if you have a pyro character, then the damage of her E skill will increase. If you have an Electro character, then the interval between each time her E skill is triggered is decreased. And if you have a Hydro character, then the duration of her own burst is increased. And it also has one or two layer stacks. So now with a C1, it basically always going to be adding you one layer of buff multiplier, regardless of you having respective elements on the team or not, guys. So if you have one Pyro, one Electro, and one Hydro, character on the team that would now be then count as two pyro two electro and two hydro and do keep in mind that even though there's zero pyro character on your team the number will still be added as if you have one pyro character and it goes for the other same element as well so this is rather a pretty good bonus for your nahidas overall making team building for her a lot easier giving nahida and your team a nice boost so i would say that this constellation is a pretty worthwhile constellation to have on her especially at her C1, which usually is pretty easy for many of us to invest in. Now for C2 guys, it's absolutely very good. What it does is that whenever Nahida uses her E skill and apply the Seeds of Skanda, Burning Bloom, Hyper Bloom and Brosian Reaction can now do critical hits of 20% crit rate and 100% crit damage. While Quicken, Aggravate and Spread will have defense rate by 30% for 8 seconds. Overall, the this is a really power boost for not just Nahida but for your whole team as well and also a rather good stopping point if you are wishing for constellation and you are basically on a budget because together guys with C1 and C2 Nahida is on a whole different level from her C0 at this point already. A C3 basically gives her a talent booster 
her E skill. Quite a substantial boost to her main source of damage. So if you want to see more power from Nahida, this is a pretty good constellation also. C4 gives her more EM based on how many opponent is affected by her E skill from 100 all the way to 160 with a maximum of 4 opponent cap. Now this probably will be the least important constellation on Nahida because our goal is to build her all the way up to 1000 EM though it will help her in terms of getting more EM this way to hit her maximum 1000 EM cap. However, if you're someone who has the ability to get her all the way to C4, you're more than capable of seeing 1000 EM Nahida build already. So this will just be helping her get a bit of more reaction damage. Plus it wouldn't be good if you're up against a solo boss because then you're only getting one buff which is 100 EM boost for Nahida. C5 will be boosting your burst talents which is also pretty good for her because you're now getting more damage and quality of life increase for your whole team. And then C6 now basically turning Nahida to be a bit of an on-field character for a few seconds where if Nahida attacks the opponent that has been marked by her seeds of scandal, she will now deal what's called karmic oblivion to all of the connected opponent with her E skill and this is calculated based on 200% of Nahida's dendro damage and 400% of her EM where this effect can last up to 10 seconds with a cap of 6 instances of damage. So this will be a huge front load of damage on our Nahida which as we have mentioned she will be on field for a bit of time. However due to the fact that Nahida isn't always built as an on field DPS character for your team therefore she won't always be contributing a large damage numbers even if she is on C6 compared to your other character on your team if she's not built as a DPS character. Therefore whenever you're running a C6 Nahida if you want to see higher numbers from her then you would tend to want to have a bit of a different build for her. So that's for Nahida's constellation. Generally guys I would say that C2 is her best stopping point as most of her constellation would just be contributing to her doing more damage. It doesn't really change up her playstyle significantly and C2 is generally pretty easy to invest in. And then next we have Nilu's constellation if you are looking to invest into her. So what her C1 does is that it basically gives her luminous illusion damage an increase by 65% and her tranquility aura duration extended by 6 seconds. So in other words it's basically either you choosing between her on field damage number an increase of 65%. Mind you, that increase is only applied on her final hit of her dance step, which is, you know, that huge slash that she does at the end. That is getting a 65% damage bonus, not the other attack before. So it's not really that significant of a boost. However, the best thing here is having her 6 seconds addition of Tranquility Aura or basically her Hydro Lotus that surrounds your character. It now has basically a 100% uptime, which makes Nilu one of if not the best character in terms of hydro application in the game. C2 is going to be generally her best constellation guys. It provides you a hydro and dendro resistance threat to your enemies of minus 35% which is huge because once again resistance threat ability is quite rare in the game. It's not something we come across every day so your team is going to be seeing a significant damage boost from this and it's also the best stopping point if you are looking into investing to your Nilu. C3 basically gives her elemental burst talent boost is probably the worst because it's only boosting Nilu's personal damage and most of the time we're not using her as somebody who does damage for the team. C4 helps her a bit with energy recharge it's not really that significant either since I'm sure most of us is not going to be focusing on Nilu's elemental burst however it does help you out since you're having a boost from your C3 and your energy requirement does go down quite a bit so you'll be seeing her doing her burst more frequently. C5 gives her E skill a talent level boost same as her C3 it's not really that significant because it's only her personal damage and C6 basically gives her an extra 30% crit rate and 60% crit damage increase because if you are someone who can C6 Nilu you're definitely going to be able to cap this out already. However guys most of the time her constellation overall would be focusing on her 
to be an on-field character other than her C1 and C2 which significantly provides your team a really good damage increase. After that it's mostly for Nilu's lovers and fans to invest in more of her personal damage so that you see high high tier level damage from Nilu herself and it's not a fit for most of us players anyway. So guys C2 for Nilu is generally a very good stopping point for her. Moving on let's have a look at our weapon banners coming up this time around. This is also a major consideration if you are looking into upgrading your Nilu and Nahida. Now guys here's my honest opinion on this is that if you're someone who's looking to invest into Nahida and Nilu and you're wondering between their C1 and their weapon then generally guys I always recommend you to try and get the weapon first before you try to go for constellations because most of the time weapons investment is always better than having C1. It is very rare that I see a C1 that is better than you having a BIS option weapon for your 5 star character. Not to mention guys in the case of Nilu and Nahida these two weapons right here doesn't just give a huge boost to their personal damage but it has so good capability of helping buff for your team as well. So generally if you are wanting to invest into these characters the weapons are just too good to pass by. So overall the lamp here is going to be the best weapon overall because it doesn't just apply to Nahida but many other characters that skills with EM can be beneficial off of this lamp and the key of Kashni suit is only for Nilu at this point. However if you do happen to get this sword then I'm sure down the line there are many other characters who can make use of it. On to our 4 star roster. This time around we are having some good characters being featured featured which are Kuki Shinobu, Dori and Layla. Now first off from the look of this I can already see that this basically does not benefit Nilu in any way so I'm quite sorry for those of you who are looking to build a team around Nilu because as you know Nilu only work in Dendro and Hydro team to her best potential. This character here can definitely be on Nilu's team if you're focusing on you know an intellectual charge or hyper bloom or you you know a free team when you're running with Nilu e skill but for Nilu herself when it comes to Bountiful Core three of these characters would work and only mostly benefits Nahida at this point which definitely Kuki Shinobu is the best character here even if you are not pulling for these two five star character Kuki Shinobu is one of the best character when it comes to aggravate and hyper bloom team at this point especially when she has access to her constellations so she's a good character for you to try and snipe however it's not always the same story for Dory and Layla Dory probably the weakest character here at this point on the banner because generally her personal damage is non-existent plus we also have many other character who has good healing capability for the the team or in other words Kuki Shinobu here who is a lot better of a healer compared to Dory. So generally getting Dory on the banner here is just going to be kind of like a boost for you and Layla who is kind of like you know considered to be a character who doesn't have any synergy with the two five star characters which I'm kind of actually surprised to see her back quite this early when there are so many other characters who is waiting to be featured. So it's also a fine thing for Layla to be here and also Layla is isn't that bad guys especially when you have her constellation. Layla herself is a decent character especially with shield and boosting your team's damage so it's not really a bad thing if you end up getting a few of her constellation. Overall decent 4 star roster I wouldn't say it is the best because only Kuki Shinobu is the character you want to try and get here on the banner. The other two characters most of the time you're not going to be using them. And then finally guys let's discuss about future banner potentials because it's one of the important important thing that you want to consider as well. Now we all know that after the first phase then Baizu and Ganyu is going to be making their appearance. Baizu of course is a character that have been waited for many of us and Ganyu she hasn't been back for quite a while as well and I know that she's a favorite for many of us too. So it's something of a consideration on your side especially for Baizu guys if you are planning to pull for him and is wondering on Nahida. Obviously we can already know this point that Nahida is such 
a better character compared to Baizu, but in terms of, you know, if you're someone who enjoys Baizu, then maybe it's actually worth it for you to try and get him first, because who knows, he might be a character that wouldn't get their rerun after a year or so, or maybe even longer than that, while Nahida's guys, she's an Archon, she's a very good character, many wants her, and usually Archon character has the tendency to be back more usual, so we can be expecting to see Nahida coming back like, you know, in four patches or so, while it might not be the same story for Baizu. And other than that guys, all the way to patch 3.7, I know it's still 6 weeks away, however saving up Primo Gems takes like forever, and there have been speculation from patch 3.7 that character, especially like Kazuha or our Haytham, may be making their appearance back. Kazuha is literally still the best support character in the game guys, so he's kind of like a must have and a recommendation to have on every single one of your accounts, even though there's technically no must have character in Genshin Impact, but Kazuya is just such a good character that it is a recommendation to have him in every one of your accounts. So that overall is going to be the biggest save up if you are someone who haven't gotten Kazuya already. So guys, overall that should be everything I have to say regarding phase 1 of patch 3.6. I hope that the video have been helpful for you guys. If you have any questions guys, do leave it down in the comment section and I or some of the other very nice Genshin Impact player will be there to help you out. If you are new to the channel guys, then be sure to subscribe as I will be having a giveaway at 35,000 subs for my subscribers. We are almost there already and might be able to make it for Nahida's banner to help you guys pull for her. So just do me a favor and click on the red subscribe button if you haven't already guys, that it is a free way for you to support and have the chance to pull for the character that you want. I really appreciate you guys sticking with me till this part of the video guys and with that I wish you a super day and I will catch you on my next video.